The Flash Season 3 Episode 8, The Invasion. Now, this episode I thought was really awesome. It was the... I, I personally count this as the official uh, first part of the four-part crossover. Um, it's a four-series crossover. I, it's basically a three-part crossover because really Supergirl... Um, for those of you who might watch, I mentioned mentioned this in my Supergirl review. I'm sure there are a ton of people that were like, "Well, I gotta watch Supergirl because it's a part of the epic crossover." And Supergirl was not even remotely a part of the crossover. And really, the scene um, of Barry and Cisco actually going to get Supergirl is at the end of uh, Supergirl's episode. So you really didn't have to watch her episode in any way, shape, or form. The only thing you technically miss is a tie-in to Cisco saying like, oh, this might take a few tries. You see those tries in Supergirl and that's it. Like you see the portal open up, but they don't show up and that's it. So this is really like where everything kicks off. And I like this first part. I thought it was really cool. They do kind of the flash forward thing. It's like, okay, this is, of course, we have our first two, you know, big CW heroes. We got Flash and we have uh, Green Arrow. So Barry is, um, it's kind of revealed through the dialogue, like Barry is considered the team leader for everybody. So it's Barry and Oliver, and it's like, hey, we are up the creek without a paddle. And, you know, when they go around the corner, it turns out that they're basically going up against all their friends. So they're going up against, excuse me, Supergirl, Firestorm, um, Spartan. I want to just call him Diggle because I feel weird calling him Spartan, but Spartan, um, Speedy, like three or four other people. I don't want to name everybody because it was actually like eight people. But I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. I'm excited to see where this goes. And all of that was just part one. So we still have, you know, two other shows to go through it. And what I really loved about this is that we have this really cool four series crossover. I really don't want to call it four part crossover. But we have this really big crossover of all the different shows. But everything's getting its own light. And I love that. I thought that was really cool. Like, even in this they kind of hint at what we should expect for those of you who might watch uh, Legends of Tomorrow. They kind of hinted at some stuff and I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. And I loved what they did with Stein where he goes through and they kind of, you know, initially I was like, I wonder what's happening because of uh, Legends of Tomorrow. I was like, what's going on with Stein? Like, why are these things happening? What did they, you know, what did they do that caused his life to change? And now it's like, oh, because of this message, we finally get the message which I'm very surprised it was revealed, but it makes a lot of sense that they would reveal it to Barry. But I've been waiting for a while. They mentioned that a few episodes back, and it's like, what is this message going to be? You know, when is it going to get revealed? And I figured it would get revealed at some point during this crossover, but I was happy to see it come on so early. And so now it's like, maybe Barry's the reason that Stein is having these issues. It's not something that they did, which they already explained the fact that his life was a little different based on one of the missions they went through where... Stein was never supposed to show up uh, in a certain location, but he did. And it's like, that wasn't, you know, that never happened in my in the initial timeline. So I thought that was cool. And that was something that they did because Barry didn't go back that far. Like, it was in, like, the 70s or something. No, that was in, like, the 80s. So, well, I don't know. I guess technically it could have, but because I don't remember what, exactly what year it was. So maybe him going back in time could have technically affected that. But... I love what they did with it. It was like, you know, here's some hints at stuff, you know, with Stein, him going to his house and, um, you know, seeing that he has a daughter and stuff. That was actually, well, I guess people know that if you watch The Flash all the way through, you know that that's a surprise because that's where he started off. So him having a, you know, a daughter was a nice surprise. It's like, okay, that's who this person was because in Legends, it was like this random young person. He thought that it was going to end up being someone that replaced his wife. And that's kind of how they played it where it's like, oh, he didn't marry his wife. He married someone else. So them going into this episode and him finding out that this young woman, these aren't memories of him when he's also young. These are actually memories of him looking at his young daughter. And I was like, oh, that's a cool surprise. So it was him actually having a daughter. And it was actually an addition to his life rather than a loss. And I thought that was really awesome. So I'm sure that will get explored more um, in the Legends episode. But I like that they did that little, you know, hint and stuff. But it really stayed true to Flash. You know, they do... They dealt with a lot of Flash-centric issues. Um, you know, this is something that really came up when it happened in uh, Supergirl. That was, like, the first hint for what I should expect for this episode. And that was um, when they first get there and Cisco's like, oh, you know, friends a loose term. We work together. When I saw that in Supergirl, I was like, whoa. Like, that was, he was really serious about that. And I was like, that, that was kind of harsh. 
So that's like the one thing I think that was a really big bonus for the crossover. Like he got that scene first. And I was like, okay, this is going to be good for Flash because he's just, you know, Cisco's just against Barry 100%. It makes a lot of sense. You know, he's, you know, he, he learns the truth. Like he was already mad, whereas like, you know, you won't go back in time to save my brother. And then he finds out that because Barry went back in time for himself, which he was already mad about, that's what led to his brother dying and all this other stuff. And I was like, that you know that coming back it's very interesting to watch like how they seem to just be trying to like tear them apart as friends they were so close before and now it's just like Cisco kind of hates Barry a little bit and I like that part and then of course when Cisco finds the recording of uh future Barry I thought that was pretty cool I was like okay he of course he does the yelling thing where it's like they deserve to know and then of course everyone overhears him say that so someone asks you know we deserve to know what and that's when uh, Diggle ends up getting mad because it's like, hey, in this alternate timeline, I had a daughter and now I have a son. And even though I don't remember this daughter, technically she did exist first. So he, you know, Barry did actually erase a daughter from his life. And I was like, that's very interesting because he never would have known. And he doesn't have those memories, but he knows that technically she was there first. Like that was his first child even though he has no memory of her, and it's like, knowing that that's technically the truth, that would make you mad at someone, like, she's gone. And this never occurred to me, but watching it, um, for those of you who might watch Arrow, it finally dawned on me, it doesn't really make a lot of sense why they had that change in there, because him having a son shouldn't have mattered, because the reason, I mean, it was just that he, like, I don't know, a different sperm got there in time. Like, honestly, that's all that happened. It was like, there was no... They, it wasn't like they had a child earlier or anything like that. The child is the same age as the daughter is. If I remember right, it's, you know, the boy, his son is the same age, like around two, you know, just over two years old. And it finally dawned on me, like, why did they do that change? Because him having a daughter was a really cool thing because they named the daughter after Sarah and stuff like that. And him just having a son is just like, oh, well, they got rid of Sarah. Like, her name meant something in her character was special because like her name was Sarah she was named after one of the people that they lost and it was just really went you know really weird when I, it finally hit me like huh there was really no reason to ever actually change that and I, I thought that I thought about that before like there was that was such a random thing to change and it worked for this and I don't know if that was the plan I was like hey let's change his daughter to a son and have that you know affect the four-part crossover maybe I mean it I guess they could have planned that far ahead if they wanted to it's such a minor change, I don't know why they bother doing that, but, you know, they have that moment where Diggle, you know, and really all the legends, of course, because they're, all they do is jump through time, it's like, hey, all we do is jump through time and try to keep things going, and poof, you just screw up everybody's life, and even in the future, we find out that um, it's possible, at least, that Barry and Iris either don't get married, um, Iris isn't a reporter, or Iris is dead. That, like, that's another possibility. Is like, that would explain why she didn't write that article. So, the name changes on the future article, and Barry's freaking out. Is like, you know, this was initially written by her, and now it's like something happened between the two of us. Or, you know, like, that's the first thing he went to. Is like, you know, I don't know. It feels like there's something different between us, but it could be something way worse than that. Like, oh, they didn't end up together. They could have been together, and she just didn't live because of how he changed the timeline, and it just affected things because even the message was 40 years in the future so I don't know I thought that was really interesting too because I'm like does that mean he went back in time 40 years from now or did he actually mean because Barry was like you know future me meant I can't be trusted right now and when he said that I was like I didn't get that at all from the message I got you know he sent that message 40 years in the future and it's like hey I went back in time you know and did this and did that but I don't know maybe he I don't know, I guess didn't want to share, you know, share that at a certain time. I don't know. I Because when I first heard the message, like I said, I figured he meant he changed time again. And it was like, all right, Barry, you did something else 40 years from now that changed the timeline all over again. But apparently that wasn't the case. So I don't know. It also made me wonder if that's why um, Rip disappeared, because he had that message. And maybe he just decided, I'm going to leave the team and go be with my wife and son. Uh, for those of you who watch Legends, but I don't know. I thought it was still interesting. You know, we actually got the message now, and 
I'm sure that'll still come up in some of the other episodes, particularly Legends, because I think um, Arrow's episode tomorrow is going to be a little different. Or I guess tonight, uh, by the time I upload this. But, I don't know. It, it should be something. Uh, I'm excited for uh, Arrow's episode tomorrow. Uh, the way this one ended was really awesome. Like, everything seemed like it worked, you know, it was working out. I was like, alright. So, excuse me. So, they go through and stuff. They, they're they ultimately able to heal everybody. Uh, Barry does his um, phasing move, which was really sweet. Like, he was shifting and she, you know, car like, flies through him. I was like, that was really awesome. So, I love that sequence and that heals everybody as <laughs> just at the last second, of course, as Oliver is out of arrows and he's, you know, trying to fight the last three people. Uh, while he made his debut as far as um, actually fighting and stuff, he didn't have his costume, but he went through and he helped out and Kara, like, sent him flying and knocked him unconscious after one hit. But he did go out there, and that's going to lead to some really good stuff between him and HR, because HR was like, you know what, you were right. They don't, you know, really respect you, or, you know, either of us. They don't recognize your potential, but I do, so I'm going to train you. I'm really curious how that's going to play out because it's HR and he really doesn't know anything about anything. He just kind of agrees about stuff. And uh, they also have him mention them reopening uh, Star Labs as well, which I always thought that was a weird idea. I was like, what can they open it up and do with it? And I also wondered, how the heck do they have any money to keep it open anyway? But um, I guess just Barry owns all of it, so that's why. Because they mentioned that again, which... They also mention, as he walks around, it's like, oh, this is just like a hall or, you know, hangar thing that Star Labs owns. He, um, apparently Barry Allen owns the Hall of Justice, so that was awesome. Um, it was like just straight up the Hall of Justice, like watching Super Friends. So that was really cool. I was like, it makes no sense that there's a hall next to a hangar on an airfield. That didn't seem like, just structurally speaking, it didn't seem to make any sense to me. But... It didn't matter because I was like, that's the Hall of Justice. So that was amazing to see. Um, who knows when they're actually going to start utilizing that. But for now, it has like the Star Lab symbols on it and stuff. And I don't know what to expect from that. But I, I didn't know we were going to be getting such a huge reference. Where it's like, oh yeah, it's just like this Hall thing that Star Lab owns. Or I guess I own now. And I'm like, he owns the Hall of Justice. So that was really cool. That was a nice reference, which... I'm sure they won't just let that fall to the wayside. That's not going to be like, oh, check this out, and then it's gone. They have the Hall of Justice officially now in, you know, the TV and the, you know, uh, flareovers, as it's called. So I'm excited to see them utilize it, even though I'm sure that won't be for a super long time. We got the Hall of Justice, not what I was expecting, but very cool. So I, I love that. Um, like I said, you know, jump into the ending again. Everything seemed fine. It's like, all right, let's go on to the next mission, and I was curious, because initially, I didn't think that they were going to solve the issue where everybody was mind-controlled. I was like, oh, this explains how the other characters come in, because early on, um, Sarah mentioned, she's like, oh yeah, you know, Amara and Nate are watching the Wave Rider, like, they're the newbies, and I knew from the promos, I was like, alright, Nate and Amara definitely show up, as well as Wild Dog, um, Curtis, and I can't think of the other dude's name, but uh, Ragman. And I don't know if Evelyn's going to show up or not. I'm not sure how they're going to play around with that. But I was like, I know uh, the other characters do end up showing up. And I just assume, like, oh, this is how they call in the rest of the characters. Because the other superheroes are mind-controlled, so they defeat them in Arrow. And then in Legends, everybody teams up to beat, you know, the aliens. It's like, nope. They actually just all got abducted. It was just, boom. Sarah got abducted. Ray got abducted. And I love the way they did the scene. I, I love some of the... Um, Stuff they did with Barry where he's running and we see him throw lightning at three different people, which is really freaking sweet. Um, the scene when he was running with Kara and he like just barely missed the laser vision and he was running towards her and he dodged it and like spun around and then ran back down the building. They did some great stuff with him at super speed and that ending sequence where he sees the light and it, he bolts and he's not even that far away, which is what kind of what I loved about it. Like that's... You know, knowing you know, some stories about Flash, specifically uh, teleportation, there's a story in the comics where he ran from one place to another and he ran faster than the people could teleport there. And I was thinking of that as I saw it and I just recently heard about that story because I didn't even know. And it was funny watching that. I was like, man, he's not going to... I figured he wasn't going to make it, but seeing the light and he runs right towards him and he's only a couple feet away 
And it was just like, man, he was too slow. And I thought that was just really cool. So we have a bunch of, uh, you know, our Arrow characters getting abducted or former Arrow characters in certain cases. Or pre it was pretty much all the Arrow characters. They were either formerly Arrow or currently Arrow characters. And um, I'm excited to see what they do with that. You know, based on the promo, we're going to be getting some dream sequence stuff. It's the happy image. Everybody's alive. Uh, we get to see Laurel come back. We get to see... Um, I Honestly, I don't even remember Oliver's dad's name because he died. <laughs> you know, he was dead since the beginning of the series, so I don't remember his name. But he comes back. Um, his mom comes back. And I'm assuming they're going to do some other stuff, you know, because they're all within the same thing. So they might have very similar visions. And eventually, it's like, hey, we're being mind controlled, you know, by the aliens. So at some point, you know, they all figure it out. So I'm excited for that. Plus, um, Slade is going to be in it. It's also, um, this is this is like the perfect time to do this. But this is the uh, 100th episode coming up for Arrow. This is actually the 100th episode within the crossover so it's the 100th episode, and they're doing a crossover thing with all the aliens and all the other shows. Plus, they're doing, like, a super homage to the entire series so far. And I'm actually really excited, like, to see them do stuff. And it seemed like, you know, Diggle was Arrow during one of the flashbacks, and he, like, you know, beat up Oliver, and then uh, Fel Felicity, like, comes running and stuff. So maybe they're going to do a thing where Oliver's starting to realize, like, what the heck is going on? Like, I'm, you know, eventually he starts to realize what's happening, so... I'm really excited to see how they they play around with this. It's an homage, plus it's, you know, the four-part crossover, so, or four-series crossover. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what they do with their 100th episode. Uh, it, it looks like it's going to be fun. Based on the promo, we get some good characters, you know, some characters coming back. We may or may not see Tommy uh, come back if they're bringing back Laurel. Why wouldn't you want Tommy to come back? Like, that was his best friend and the woman he loved. You know, everybody else who's dead has come back. Even Slade is in there for whatever reason as a villain. So I assume that we're going to see Tommy as well. It would be weird if he was like the one person that didn't show up. Although uh, the actor is on another TV show. So hopefully he's able to actually show up. Because that would suck if, you know, he just couldn't do it. But I'm super excited for this next episode. I I'm actually more for the Arrow thing than the actual crossover stuff. Just because it's the 100th episode. And they seem to be doing like, hey... Let's kind of, let's alter, you know, the history of the series, but also take a look back at the same time. Like, they have this stuff where he, uh, even in the promo, just him, like, looking at the boat, it's like, man, that's, like, some season one type stuff where he takes it out when he's on the island and, like, first looks at the bow and things like that. Or the other million times, he they had that scene a lot where he would just take it out and look at the bow and he was, like, always re reflecting on stuff. And it's, like, it's cool to see that even in the promo. So I'm actually really excited thought this was a great, you know, technically first part of, you know, the big crossover. It was awesome to see, um, you know, all the characters come together. Then we're going to have even more of the characters coming in to try and find the rest of the Arrow team and save them from the aliens. And then, you know, the Legends is going to be like the big grand finale for everything where everybody's in it and they just wipe out the Dominator. So, excited for this next episode. Excited to see how they celebrate 100 episodes of Arrow. Um, of course, we'd love to know what you guys thought about this episode, um, just as a Flash episode as well as a part of the crossover. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And although there are a million questions as far as what you guys want to see uh, from the rest of this crossover, I do want to know that, of course. But to get, you know, Flash specific, because this was still a Flash episode, um, I want to know where you guys think they're headed with um, the relationship between Cisco and Barry. Like, it... It, it's so weird seeing Cisco so upset and stuff, you know, at Barry. Like, they were so close, and, you know, Cisco is Cisco. He's not even himself in normal situations. Like, he is a little bit, but it's like it's just always there. Like, no matter what, he's just upset, and it makes perfect sense, especially now that he knows the truth. So, I don't know. I assume, of course, that it'll work out. It. I, I mean, it's TV. I just, that's the only reason, honestly, I just assume it's going to work out. But I would love to know your predictions for how things are going to play out. Will it get solved uh, within the crossover? Like, is, I mean, even Barry saving his life, I don't think would matter. It's like, hey, thanks for saving my life. But it doesn't negate the fact that basically you wiped away my brother's life. So I want to know your predictions uh, for where that's headed. Of course, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode in general and what you guys are thinking of the uh, crossover so far, at least. The official part one, um, I'm saying at least, of this uh, 
4 Series crossover, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.